Hey guys, welcome to Man Medicine, where we talk about men can optimize their health and escape the collapse in the U.S. healthcare system. All right, so you've been to your doctor, you've got low testosterone. He says, you know, the reason you got low testosterone is you're too fat. And if you just lose weight, your testosterone is going to fix itself. <laughs> um, you know, and he's probably right, at least partially. But, the, you know, the question is always like, well, how much weight do I have to lose and, and in order to recover my testosterone? If I lose the weight, how much am I going to get back? And then obviously the most important question is, am I going to recover enough testosterone, you know, in order to feel better, to get my levels up to the point where uh, my symptoms, whatever those may be, are alleviated? Well, it's kind of an unanswered question, right? Um, now, we know that men's testosterone's, testosterone levels have been dropping for a very long time. And obviously, obesity has a major, uh, major effect on that. Um, but, you know, the studies are pretty clear that even when you correct for obesity and, and take that out of the equation, there's still a fairly significant decline in men's testosterone over the last several decades. I, there's not really much argument about that at this point. So clearly, you know, obesity is a major factor. And as we're going to show here in the study that I'm going to show you guys today, yeah, absolutely, losing weight will improve your testosterone levels, but that's one piece of the puzzle, okay? It's one piece of the, uh, of the equation. So this is a study I want to show you guys today. It's relatively new from Andrology. Uh, came out in, uh, yeah, June of 2023. So not exactly like hot off the press, but, but pretty close, at least for Andrology studies. Meta-analysis and construction of simple-to-use nomograms for approximating testosterone levels gained from weight loss in obese men. Another really long <laughs> journal title from, from Andrology. But um, this is pretty cool. And it actually comes with the nomograms in them. So I'm going to put a link to this. This is an open access article, fortunately. So I'll put a link in the description. And then you guys, you can print out the nomogram and, you know, look at and see, you know, what your levels would look like, you know, if you lost X amount of uh, weight and uh, you know, I could even potentially take it to your doctor and uh, and show it to them. So um, now, if, in case you don't know what a nomogram is, uh, it, it's it's a kind of an old school uh, tool used in the engineering world. Uh, we use these sometimes in in the medical world, um, primarily in the toxicology realm. But it's basically like a quick way to use like a parallel coordinate system to arrive at a an answer for what would otherwise be like a fairly complex mathematical equation. I don't know if I'm explaining that really well or not. But um, so here's here's an example here. You want to know what your, um, you know, the total body surface area is of an individual. Well, you need to know their height and then their weight. So you have your three uh, parallel coordinates here. So, you know, it shows a line here, right? So you start, you're five foot six and you're 120 pounds. So you just draw a straight line between those two points and where you intersect, that's your answer, right? That's your surface area in square meters. So you can put, you know, all, there's all kinds of nomograms out there. Um, like I said, I use them occasionally in the in the, uh, in the realm of toxicology with like acetaminophen overdoses and there's one for salicylates too, but you know, they, they get used in the engineering world quite a bit, probably not so much anymore in the age of you know, computers and calculators and AI, but, uh, but they're still, they're still out there. Anyway, that's, we're going to have something like this for, uh, testosterone, both total and free. So I think you guys might find that, uh, might find it interesting. So let's get back to the study here. It, this is a, so it's a meta-analysis, right? So that means they've collated data from multiple different studies and put them all together. So there's 44 studies. They use a total of just over 1,700, almost 1,800 subjects. And they looked at their weight loss over the course of 26 weeks. And interestingly enough, they, um, they lumped people who lost weight from a low calorie diet along with people who lost weight from bariatric surgery. So they didn't really discriminate in terms of how you lost the weight. They just went by total amount of weight lost. And actually, as you'll see, one of the flaws in the study, in my opinion, is that they based all of this off of BMI. Yeah, we'll talk about that um, a little bit. And, you know, spoiler alert, the more the more weight you lose, <laughs> the more weight the subjects lost, the better their testosterone levels were. I don't think that should come as a surprise uh, to anybody. So this little graph here illustrates what I mean about 
you know, the differences between dieting with a hypocaloric diet versus bariatric surgery. Clearly, uh, bariatric surgery is associated with massive weight loss for most people. And you can see that here with this graph. I mean, roughly, you know, between 30, you know, 25 and 35 percent loss in BMI from bariatric surgery. And, you know, you're lucky to get 10% with, with caloric restriction, which is, you know, that shouldn't, that shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, dieting is hard. Dieting is really, really hard. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, if we follow these bariatric surgery patients out, you know, a year or two years, you know, out to five years, there's obviously, this is not maintained. It certainly is in some, but a lot of people gain weight back, especially after uh, gastric sleeves and things like that. Maybe less so with um, things like Ruin Y surgeries. But anyway, that's a whole nother that's another that's another podcast. So okay, so let's let's look at these these testosterone uh, numbergrams. They broke the the individuals up. They were, they were aged like eighteen to sixty roughly, and they looked at men. They just lumped them into two groups, like under four under age forty and over age forty, and there's some subtle differences, not not huge differences. The the younger crowd gained more free testosterone than the older crowd, the over 40 group. But as you'll see here, the differences are not they're not huge. So um, but they they did make that distinction. Okay, so let's look at uh, at this this first nogram here. So this is for men under the age of 40, and then this is what happens to total testosterone with uh, weight loss. So on the left hand side, we see uh, baseline BMI and then target BMI on, on the far right with a gain in testosterone in uh, nanomoles per liter. And then I'll translate that to nanograms per deciliter because that's how my brain works. And then, the, with, and then in the blue, it's like what the percent change is. So, um, so I drew these red lines here with, uh, with a little Photoshop. And just to show you like two different scenarios. So I just arbitrarily put, picked in all the examples, uh, we're gonna start with a BMI. A guy comes in, he's got a BMI of 34, it's extremely common. And then he loses enough weight to get his BMI down to 30, which, you know, that's pretty realistic. Uh, I think most men can do that. And so what you see here is a one point, roughly as you, as you draw that red line, it intersects here at roughly the 1.5 nanomole per liter little mark there and then roughly it's a little hard to say for sure it's roughly about 15 percent maybe it's like maybe 14 percent gain in total testosterone so one nanomole per liter translates into roughly like 43 nanograms per deciliter so according to this meta-analysis the average guy uh, under the age of 40 who goes from a bmi of 34 to a bmi of 30 can expect a 43 point gain in their total testosterone statistically, according to this study, okay? Now, as I mentioned, the more weight loss you get, the better the, the results, right? So if we take this guy and we take him from a BMI of 34, and we draw a red line through here and we get to 27, well, not surprisingly, you know, it, he gets a better result, right? So he gains about, if you look at that very closely, it's about three nanomoles per liter and about a 30% improvement in total testosterone. So that ends up being about 86 nanograms per deciliter on average in, in this study group. Uh, and again, this is for men under the age of 40. So um, let's move on here. What about over age 40? Because I know most of my audience is like me, over the age of 40. Uh, you're not gonna see huge differences here. We'll do the same scenario. We go from 34 to 30, okay? You gain about two nanomoles per liter. That's about 57 nanog nanograms per deciliter. That's a 20% improvement. If you go from 34, you get a little bit more aggressive with your weight loss and your dieting, and you go down to 27, okay? You're gonna gain roughly, you see where it intersects there. It's roughly 3.5 nanomoles per liter, roughly 40% improvement um, there and then that's going to end up being pretty close to 100 nanograms per deciliter gain when you go from 34 to 27 in terms of bmi all right moving on now uh now this is free testosterone which is what really matters everybody kind of gets hung up on their total but really it's the free is where the action is so if you're over age 40 Again, we're doing the same scenarios, 34 to 30, and then 34 to 27. So 34 to 30 gets you about a 15-point rise if we're using pe picomoles per liter, okay? And that's about a, 
give or take about a 6% improvement in your free. And then the, uh, the more aggressive weight loss, you get about a 25 point increase, and that's going to get you about a 10% improvement um, in, your, in your free testosterone if you're over the age of 40. So you can see here with the younger guys, um, you know, you get about a 15 point increase and they get you about 6%. If you, with more aggressive weight loss, you get about a 30 point increase and that's about 11%. So, right, like not, not huge. I mean, they mentioned that it's more, but it's really, honestly, it doesn't make, I don't think it's going to make any sort of clinical difference um, in, in, in most men. So, so that's it. So there's, I have some heartburn about this study, obviously. One, as I mentioned, you know, they use BMI. I would have, I, I would love to just throw BMI out the window. I know it's a good general measure, like when you're looking at large populations and generally, you know, people with a BMI of 30 are, are genuinely obese. But, you know, there are people out there with like myself who uh, have BMIs of 30 that are not and, you know, have single digit body fat percentages in some cases. So it's uh, body fat percentage is a lot it's a lot more relevant and a lot more of a useful measurement, but I understand when you're, when you're doing a study, I mean, getting body fat, an accurate body fat measurement is going to jack the cost of your study through the roof. BMI is a quick, easy calculation and it's a way to save money. And, you know, the results are still relatively valid. There's no mention in there whatsoever about, you know, getting in terms of composition, you know, we just looked at weight loss. So we don't know how much fat they, they lost versus muscle tissue. You know, that obviously can have a huge, a huge impact in, in the results that these guys get. We don't know anything about their diet. We don't know really anything about their uh, additional training. So there's a lot of unknowns. They just looked at their change in, in weight, uh, converted that into a BMI. So you have to take some of this stuff with a grain of salt. And I think that has a lot to do with why these, these numbers are not terribly impressive, in my opinion. They, and, and they're, they're a lot less than what I've seen in clinical practice. In clinical practice where, you know, an obese man gets on a, a proper hypocaloric diet, is engaged in high intensity weight training to preserve muscle tissue, is eating adequate amounts of protein, you know, doing cardio, uh, cutting out endocrine or, you know, limiting exposure to endocrine disrupting compounds, like all the things that I work with my guys on, now we start seeing like much more impressive improvements in in uh, testosterone. So in some cases, like way more than double what what they showed in this study. And then you know also in my practice, this is this is one of the scenarios where I will entertain uh, the use of a drug like enclomiphene because uh, especially for short term use to raise testosterone levels to facilitate. Uh, the weight loss, uh, and in terms of uh, facilitating the uh, resolution of their hypogonadal symptoms, hopefully, it doesn't always do that, but uh, basically to give them the quote kick in the pants that they need uh, in order to start doing all the lifestyle stuff, you know, in order to get that that body fat percentage down. Again, body fat percentage is what counts. So in those scenarios, clearly, like just when you introduce enclomiphene, the testosterone levels like markedly increase. And then when the enclomiphene is discontinued, they'll settle back down, but they'll have a much better baseline because their body composition has changed. So anyway, it's um, it's an interesting study, but you know, just understand that there's obviously some limitations to it. And again, I'll put it, uh, I'll put the link to the PDF in the uh, in the show notes. So you can actually, you know, you can print it out at home and, and you can play around with it and take a look at it. So I, I don't want, what I don't want you guys to do is look at that and be like, well, there's no point in losing weight. You know, I'm never going to get my testosterone back. And then just use that as an excuse to like, just get on testosterone and, um, and then not do any of the work that you need to do to fix your body composition. Because even if you, even if you do get on testosterone and, uh, you know, your goal is not to recover your own testosterone, the, the health enhancing benefits of body fat loss uh, go well beyond just improving your testosterone levels. You know, they're going to reduce your risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, all sorts of other health related issues. And you know what? You're going to look better naked. So that's always good too. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, this is just a short one. Uh, it's an interesting article. It's it, it helps answer a question that I get asked a lot, and, and and the question obviously is is you know how much testosterone am I going to recover if I do the work and lose weight? Again, I think this study you know it underestimates what I've seen, but at least it's a good starting point. So love to hear you guys' comments. I will catch you next time. Bye bye. 
All Man Medicine video and audio has been created and shared online for informational purposes only. This podcast does not constitute the practice of medicine or professional healthcare services of any kind, including the giving of medical advice. I am not your doctor. No doctor-patient relationship has been established. This content is not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied upon solely for that purpose either. The only purpose of this content is to present peer-reviewed, research-backed health information for your consideration. As always, rely on the advice and guidance of your personal physician before undertaking any activity presented here, and if in doubt or not comfortable with said activity, practice discretion. Your health is your responsibility and not ours. Finally, I take conflicts of interest seriously. I accept no compensation whatsoever from any private corporations, including pharmaceutical or supplement companies. You can trust that if I recommend a medication, product, or service, it's because I genuinely believe in it and not because I'm being paid to endorse it.